everybody. Welcome to ABA Inside Track, the podcast. That's like reading in your car, but safer. I almost forgot the tagline. What's our tagline? I'm your host, Robert Perry Cruz, and with me as always are my fabulous co-hosts. I'm sitting second today, <laughs> so I'm Jackie. And I'm over here in, on the side, so I'm Diana. Well, it's so great for all of you out there to join us for our new seating arrangement. But this isn't a podcast about the best way to sit next to your, uh, to your, to your colleagues and friends and family. This is a podcast about ABA and behavior analysis and being a BCBA and reading the research and discussing the research and research, research, research. Yep. And every month we do a preview episode to give you a heads up as to what episodes we'll be releasing in the coming weeks, as well as to give you the links. Well, we can't give you the links here in the video, but you know, let you know what articles that we have links on our website to that we will be discussing at length. So some of our listeners really like to read them ahead of time and then hear what we have to say. Some folks like to hear what we have to say, then go back and read them with that perspective. Either way is awesome, and we're just glad you're here to join us. So without any further ado, let's get started with our week. What are you looking at? Everyone's looking at different things. That's the problem, Jack. You usually have your computer and you're over there. I know. So it doesn't distract, like, what are you doing? distract me from, Sorry. <laughs> from my job. I'm ready. Okay, I'm glad you're ready, Diana. I actually don't have a role in this. In the previews? No. Sometimes you do. Not today. Sometimes you do the articles, but I already today's, got them. Today she's on vacation. I'm just going to say like this. In fall. She's got a rose. You should just, you should just, when people say things, you should just repeat their last comment back and be like, yeah, topics for the month. That's basically what I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three topics this month. Whew, finally, yeah, a month three that doesn't topics. have five different weeks, which I feel like the last three months have been five that weeks is each. A, it's been crazy. That's a calendarial impossibility. Okay, well, we just finished up Supervision September, so we're sort of going back to our anything goes topics for the month. We have a few that were from listeners. We have a few that we just wanted to do because we got a chance to talk to cool people. And then we have one that we brought back that I don't think anyone else wants. But you know what? We make the show, so we'll put whatever <laughs> topics we want out there. <laughs> so we have three topics. We're going to be talking about stimulus equivalents. We're going to be talking about self-care. And we're bringing it back, grab bag, in which we talk about whatever happens to be on our minds in terms of fun research articles that we have read in the past month or so. So, what articles will we be reading for those? Well, the first, stimulus equivalents, we have three articles we'll be discussing. And I have to look at my computer, so pardon my eyesight. It's not going to be staring at you friends out there. The first article will be a classic Murray Sidman article. Sidman Ooh. Crescent Jr. and Wilson Morris from the Journal of the Experimental Analysis of Behavior from 1974. And it's called Acquisition of Matching to Sample via Mediated Transfer. And Sounds thrilling. I know. You know, fun fact about this article, it was completed during research uh, between Northeastern University and the Eunice K. Shriver Center at the Walter E. Fernald State School. And uh, for those of you who have listened to the show, um, you know that various members of our families are related to either psychology or behavior analysis. My mother was a psychologist who actually worked for many years at the Fernald State School. And when I told her, hey, we were reading, uh, we're going to be reading an article by Murray Sidman, who she, who she knew uh, of, I don't know if she got a chance to meet him. They were besties. At Fernald State <laughs> School. She said, you know, when I got out of when I got my PhD, I specifically went to the Fernald School because that's where Sidman was doing all his at the time, you know, like behavior, you know, behaviorism work. But by the time she graduated with her doctorate and got out to the Fernald School, he had gone elsewhere. So she did not get to work with Murray Sidman. So she I didn't expect that to depress her, but oh well. <laughs> Sorry, You're Mom. Like, but I did. Bam, Mom. <laughs> Just kidding. So that's one article from the Wayback Machine. Our next one is a more recent article. It's Kites, Miguel, Cow, and Finn using conditional discrimination training to produce emergent relations between coins and their values in children with autism from the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis 2011. And finally, Cowley Green and Bronling McMorrow, Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis 1992, using stimulus equivalence procedures to teach name face matching to adults with brain injuries. So three articles about stimulus equivalents, all kind of coming at it from different angles or different angles of the triangle, mm -hmm. you might say. You might. You might also say, I bet a listener asked for stimulus equivalents. No, that was our very own Diana, who was desperate to do a stimulus equivalents episode. They claim that I that I chose this topic, but I have no recollection of doing so. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Do you know what I think it was? Class. We Maybe. You got a lot class. of class, Diana. Mm -hmm. You're bringing it back class. to the classics. Stimulus equivalents. <laughs> well, you know, someone out there might find it useful. I do. I, I did. 
I think talking about talking about stimulus equivalents, talking about any of these complicated tasks is always important for us because maybe not as much for you guys because you have to teach it to so many people. So it's, it's more fluent. But when you're a practitioner, and I know a lot of our listeners out there are clinicians or practitioners, you really don't get an opportunity to talk all about stimulus equivalents in precise terminology as much as you would think. Um, surprisingly, young children that you might work with consulting, uh, they, they don't want to hear about it. Uh, they find no. it aversive. Most parents and other professionals find it aversive as well. So I think it's nice to have a chance to do it with with some buds here on the show. Aww. Buds. All right, next topic. What else do we got? We are talking with Dr. Shane Spiker. We're going to be talking with him all about self-care. That's something that he has been very interested in. And he shares not only some articles that he wanted us to read to discuss, but also his own uh, his own dissertation on the topic of self-care. So long. So <laughs> It so it's long. dissertation length. It really it's dis- well, I'm glad it's dis- dissertation length. So for that, we have, and this is from Dr. Spiker, a blueprint for general, nope. Sorry, that, that was, was a lie. Dr. That was a lie. Dr. Spiker. I got the wrong article in front of me. This one is, though, supervision for certification in the field of applied behavior analysis, characteristics and relationship with job satisfaction, burnout, work demands, and support by Dunavi, Fennel, and Early from the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. We're also going to be discussing Plantivo, Dunavi, and Virez Ortega's high levels of burnout among early career board certified behavior analysts with low collegial support in the work environment from the European Journal of Behavior Analysis. Folks in America, don't worry. Even though they're international and European journals, they have plenty of things to say about people from America. So don't don't feel like you got left out. Whew, America first. Oh, we can't right, have right, that. Everybody. We got oh. America. Oh. And <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing the character sure. of somebody Continue. Who, okay. And then finally, supervisor support as a predictor of burnout and therapeutic self-efficacy in therapists working in ABA schools by Gibson, Gray, and Hastings from the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders, 2009. And then, of course... You didn't tell us what the title was. Supervisor support as a predictor okay, of burnout and therapeutic self-efficacy in therapists you working did. in ABA schools. Sorry, you did. The part you just said? You know, <laughs> just because it doesn't have the word America in the title, Jackie, I still pay attention. So I think from now on, to just go back to the length of Dr. Shane's dissertation, then I'm going to refer to to all of my dresses now as either brief report length, full article length, or dissertation length. It's a floor length. I love that. Right? Yep. Oh, exactly. Man, I, I wish you'd thought of that when, when, when we were, you know, just starting dating that. That would have been great. <laughs> I'm like, anyway, I got to go. You know you love it. <laughs> And finally, we've got our grab bag. We used to do grab bags every 12 episodes, and it didn't seem like anyone but us cared. So we sort of put it to bed for a little while. But you know what? We We had some articles. It's back. It's grab bag reboot, baby. Well, you know what happened is it's episode 144, which is what happens when 12 is multiplied by 12. Yes. So I really just couldn't miss that opportunity. Yes, but if you missed grab bag and you were like, oh, they skipped one, well, this one's for you. Write in. Let us know. If we don't get any emails, we'll assume everyone hates grab back again. We'll put it back to sleep. We won't. Back to sleep. So, so we need it again till our time of need, which is this month. Uh, this first, uh, the first article that we'll be discussing is, I believe this was your di- uh, your article. I think so. You chose Diana. Yeah. Was a blueprint for general case procedures illustrated by teaching adolescents with autism spectrum disorder to use a chip debit card by Milada, Reeve, Reeve, and Dixon. And that was in Behavioral Interventions 2020. Grab bags should always be recent. They don't always have to be, but we, we try to make them recent. Uh, here is mine, my uh, contribution to the grab bag bag, and that's an evaluation of parents as behavior change agents in the preschool life skills program by Gunning, Holloway, and Grealish from the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis, also 2020. I love how you say that. Thank you. And, oh, Jackie, you really dropped the ball with using a checklist to increase objective session note writing, preliminary results by Luna and Rap for behavior analysis and practice. All that part's good. 2019. Ouch. You know, I wanted to make it relevant. If it were 2020, it would be even more <laughs> relevant. I just pretend that 2020 did not exist. <laughs> so it goes into 2019, 2021. I'm going to look right. back at 2020 and be like, wait, a lot of great research articles published then. Yeah. What were they about? I don't remember. They're about something. Tell us something. <laughs> Pandemic something. Who remembers? We've shut that out. Those episodes are deleted. Goodbye. Yeah. And that is October 2020 for ABA Inside Track. All right. I'll uh, be there. You'll be there? Yeah, I'm going to come. That's good. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll be there, too. 
dressed in my Halloween costume. That's good. Okay, there you go. Remember that I'll time be wearing my dissertation length <laughs> gown. Remember that time when we did that puppet preview episode? Yes. That was fun. That was, fun. That was a good one. Sometimes yeah. we come up with funny. I, I, that was this episode summer, 53, I like good, Empathy. Yeah. That was empathy. Yeah, that was empathy. I think this summer we had really a bunch good. of good. We went outside. We stuck Jackie under the, the jungle gym in mm-hmm. our yard. Yeah. A lot of fun things. Yeah, that was my favorite one. The pump, the we should have worn costumes to, for, for October, I guess. But oh well. Next time. It's been it's been a tough been a, been a, been a I was long gonna, I was going to have us know. put on masks, like ma- these kind of masks, like clay yeah. masks oh. and cucumbers, that and put our ta- nice. hair up in a towel for self-care, but I forgot. Should we delete this and just start all over Probably, again? yep. No, just keep going? All right. Okay, we'll soldier on. Well, let's just go right on into Errata. It's a section of the show where we talk about the goings-on in the world, going goings on in the podcast, and we share some emails from listeners. Uh, I guess the first thing, just to bring up briefly is thanks to everyone who joined us for any of our uh, live events or fun events that we had planned in September to uh, kind of promote the launch of our Patreon page. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We got a couple folks signed up there. We're really excited Yay! that anyone, you know, we, you, you do these things, and you're like, I don't know if a single person will care. And the fact that you can have anyone show any interest is always so appreciated. You cared. <laughs> uh, so we've got, you know, we've got folks uh, signed up there, so we'll be doing some extra content there. Uh, you know, it, it's not it's not too late though. If you're interested, just go to patreoncom inside track and you can sign up uh, at the five dollar level. You can subscribe there to come to our every other month social get together. We'll be having one of those this month. At the ten dollar level, you can join us for a book club podcast. Where we'll be doing three book clubs a a not a month. No, that would be a lot of books. No, three book just... clubs annually, and those would be worth two CES, no additional charge, just for subscribing. You get to be a part of those. They're only going to be available for patrons. So if you like our book club episodes, or you see a book, you know, because you'll be able to see what books we're going to be doing, and you say, well, I want to hear them talk about that. Sorry, they're locked up uh, only for our patrons. So if you're interested, head on over again, ABA Inside Track, uh, sorry, patreon.com slash ABA Inside Track. Uh, so, but again, thank you uh, for those of you who joined us. Thank you so much. We had a lot of fun doing those. It was really, really great. So that is kind of it uh, for us. We had some great talk. Uh, big thanks again to the Thompson Center uh, who had us for a third year in a row. We could not unfortunately be there in person, nor could anyone because it's an online <laughs> conference this year. So we're going to miss, uh, you know, if you heard, <laughs> heard us talking about it before, we always do the, we talk to the students at the poster session. We always get a lot of great talks uh, from there. We get to meet a lot of other professionals in the field. We get the great food spread that they put out. Ah, but alas, uh, but we were able to to at least be there in spirit and in our virtual talk. So if you uh, signed up to go to the conference, you might have seen us. If you didn't, we'll be releasing that as a bonus episode sometime this month or next month. We haven't quite figured it out, but that audio will be out there for people to listen to just to hear us talking about the idea of cultural competence and how do we promote cultural competence through BCBA supervision. Yay. Yeah. Rob, you also wanted me to remind you during this errata to correct the name of the author oh, that Laura. you thought was the actress from Game of Thrones. Laura, Tur- yes, I, I believe it was last. It was. I, I, I'm I don't know now which was, episode, but I referred to, uh, to Dr. Laura Turner. As Sophie Turner, <laughs> several Diana times made a joke about it, and I sort of went over my head, and I kept referring to her as Sophie Turner. I don't know why, because I actually I saw her do a, a workshop at Babbitt, and it was just loved it. So uh, not not even it's like I've never met or heard of this person before. I just got the wrong name. I was just thinking about Sophie Turner. She is cute. I was just well, I was more remembering how disappointing the last season of Game of Thrones was, yeah, and I just couldn't true. get it out of my head. So right. yeah, two so different apologies, people turns apologies, out. Apologies, Doctor Turner. Uh, you know. <laughs> You can, you can come on come on uh, the show sometime and you can you can yell at me for my gaffe. I apologize though, and I will say your name correctly from here on out. That okay. is my, my restitution statement and my apology to know okay. that I'm serious about this. And it's a public apology too. It certainly is. Um, I've got some things. What are your things? Uh, we have a listener who took us up on a challenge. Listener Chris. Listener Chris. You could use this one too. And use both the microphones. Listener Chris. Jackie. Listener Chris. Uh, took us up on our challenge to make a tolerance training flow chart. Wow. And it's amazing. Rob's going to put it right down here. You'll probably just be over your face. And right yeah, over we'll here. Have very, the it's problem with very three of large. Us, we'll have it here. We'll post it on the Facebook. But we'll, we'll, we'll get it out yeah. there. Everyone's going to be able to see Listener this. Chris made it, and it starts with tolerant deficit, and it goes through all of the questions, and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. I'm looking at it right now. So you guys can all thank you thank, thank you, Chris. you chris i'll That's... be waiting for the audiobook version of it as well so you know whenever you want to want to get to that 
listen to it on a on the lawn mowing the lawn. Um, also, some listeners have emailed about our older episode, episode 42, which is CMOs. Mm-hmm. So if you are thinking about revamping your ideas about CMOs, this is one that you can listen to. And one of our uh, listeners, uh, Francois, I believe, mm-hmm. said, thank you for the umbrella example. Adorable and help me visualize it better. Dog umbrella. Ha. Huh. If you don't know what she's talking about or he's talking about or they're talking about, go ahead and listen to that episode. Seems like a good one. Yeah, it is. It is nice to have a chance. I think especially we got stimulus equivalents coming up, CMOs, uh, mm-hmm. to get a chance to talk in a way that is is both using the precision of language that behavior analysts should have, but also have a little fun with the topic. I think it's a good way to sort of stretch one's um, opinions and, and ability to talk to various audiences about these topics, especially something as complicated as CMOs really can be. So anytime we have listeners who uh, have a metaphor or a simile or a joke or something that helps them sort of recontextualize or rethink about a topic, we are always very touched because it's something that, you know, one of the reasons we wanted to do this show is to be able yeah. to do that. So thank you. Thank and you then awesome. one other listener asked um, about, Yancy asked about some books that we would recommend reading. Uh, she's just starting her behavior analytic journey. Uh, and we recommended Let Me Hear Your Bo- a Voice by Catherine Maurice and Meaningful Differences Between the Everyday Experiences of Young American Children by Hart and Risley. It's uh, published in the 70s. Um, so those are the two books that we recommended for her. And if you and if any of you want to be reading books, those are two good ones to read. That's all I got for you. Great. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our preview episode. Thanks, everyone, so much for watching, for listening, for subscribing to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you like to get your podcasts. Uh, thank you all so much for writing in. Uh, we always appreciate getting emails from listeners with thoughts, topics, feedback, whatever you want to send us. We're always happy to get it. There are a lot of ways that you can get in touch with us. In addition to subscribing to the podcast, you can go online and find us everywhere on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram as ABA Inside Track. You can go to our website, abainsidetrack.com, to find links to all of the articles that we will be discussing this month. And then for every episode, all of the articles there. You can also purchase CEs for listening to our full-length episodes, if you would so desire. You can find these episodes posted on our YouTube page with the YouTube subtitling feature. And of course, you can always feel free to email us at abainsidetrack at gmail.com. And again, if you're interested in a little bit more uh, chance to chat with us every other month and to get more book clubs, topics, and to uh, get some discounts at our store, check us out also at patreon.com slash abainsidetrack. You well, forgot one thing. What did I forget? Stay tuned for our new web design. Oh, that's right. Yes, we were very excited to, to get a chance to, to talk to someone about how we make our website more navigable. Because one of the questions that comes up a lot navigable. is, navigable is, where do I find your episodes? And it was like, oh, you go to, pre- you go to abinsidetrack.com, you go to previous episodes, and then there's a mess of them, and you can eventually find them. And I think I made a search bar at one point, but it is not my area of expertise. Yeah. And we asked some 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 professionals to give us their opinion. So that will be launching hopefully very shortly uh, by the time you see this. It uh, seen some seen some uh, kind of docs for it. It's very slick, so you'll be able to search by so the type slick. of episode. You'll be able to do a search for the episodes itself. Of course, find links to all of the uh, various episodes we've done for CEs. Bonus Your mouse episodes. will just slide right off. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> slick. Wet hair. Yeah, I think it shows our guests a little bit the guests we've had on the show it, it gives them I a chance to shine up. more as opposed to the page now where it's like slick, slick and low. shiny <laughs> oh boy greasy black hair that's what i imagine you know like grease from grease or like the way like john travolta's hair oh yeah yep. love it all right well that's it oh, that, for the episode that concludes. we'll be back next week with the first of our full-length october episodes but until then keep responding bye, bye.